Thank you everyone for clicking on and watching this video. This is part two of the weekly Q&A. Part one has already been uploaded and available on the channel. If you watched that one, thank you for doing so. And I hope you enjoyed this one too. If you haven't watched that one yet, make sure after you watch this one, you go back and watch that one as well. Here to do Q Q&A part two for the week. Easy for me to say it. Recording this at 5.30 in the morning. So what else are you going to expect? Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Horror Movie Review 73 asks, which year in WWF slash E do you think was their best year? 1997, 1998, 2000, or 2002? Um... I guess that depends on what you're using as your parameters of best. I think if it was actual business, I would think 2000 was actually the best year out of those four. I do see where you left 2001 out, and I appreciate that, and thank you for that. Um, their best year from a box office viewership kind of standpoint is probably 2000, I believe. Um, their best year, like... Figure 2002, a lot of people, myself included, really enjoyed that year, SummerSlam and Survivor Series, and it gave you Hogan and Rock. So they had a pretty good performance in some of those big kind of uh, marquee shows that year, but even that was post-invasion angle, so the only but so good. Um, brings me to, like, if I was thinking about, like, entertainment value and the things that happened, the stories, the characters, the moments... 98 would probably be the best year. My favorite year is still 97 out of these four that you listed, though. Because 97 is where you saw the wide-sweeping changes. Like, if you go and watch Royal Rumble 97 to Survivor Series 97, you see a seismic shift in change in the creative philosophy, direction, approach of the company. I love that year. Of WWF. You know, Team Canada, like that was Bret Hart at his absolute best. DX, Shawn Michaels being the piece of crap that he was, and it coming across on television, and it really worked. The development and growth of the Stone Cold Steve Austin character throughout the year. The Rock slowly but surely starting to kind of figure himself out. You have Mick Foley, you have Triple H starting to kind of come into his own. You have The Undertaker, like I could go on and on and on with all the things that you had in WWF in 97. You know, like it was a great year in terms of the development and the changes from the beginning to the end. Mid Carter J, did The Rock's God promo bury Billy Gunn's push in 1999? It certainly didn't help. It probably also didn't help that Rock just did not want to work with Billy Gunn. And to be clear, I understand. Billy Gunn was not in the Rock's class. And even if you're working with Billy Gunn, you're not going to be elevating him to the Rock's level. So why would the Rock lower himself to that level to work with Billy Gunn? You're going to take your top guy and lower him a level to not elevate somebody? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Mo Benny 99 your favorite country to go to for the holiday? Uh, that's a really random and weird question. You assume that I've ever been to any other country outside of the U.S.? Must be nice. What the hell type of privileged life are you leading? That you could sit there and go on holiday to other countries? I wish I knew that life. I would have said something smart ass here for the American audience and said, you know, places like West Virginia or Arkansas or Alabama. You know, those are like foreign countries in and of themselves. But I, I've never been to another country outside of the U.S., so I could not tell you. Goldberg is go. Who would you have faced Roman next after Jay Uso? Probably the theme. Like, let's come back to that story and let's kind of uh, put the bows on that. That probably be the next story we go to, uh, especially since you just unveiled a new uh, wobbly walrus character in the Firefly Funhouse. Kind of makes sense to, you know, go down that direction. And next question, James Forkham asks, who would you say are the top three favorites to win the 2021 Royal Rumble match? I'm assuming you're asking about the men's match. I'm assuming. And if I'm wrong, you can correct me. But, um, like, to me right now, the two choices are Big E and Keith Lee. And I just don't see where there's a third viable option. I really don't. Who's the third option? Who's the third man? It's got to be one of those two guys. It's got to be. I think. I believe. That's what I feel. King David H. 
Why does Cole stick with the big dog moniker for Roman Reigns when the tribal chief works so much better? I'm sure that's because that's what Michael Cole's being fed to say. I completely agree. Stop using the big dog from his old heel days. He is a baby face now. He is the tribal chief. Call the tribal chief! It's not that hard. And I totally agree. It sounds more badass. It sounds more unique. And it sounds much more fitting than, here comes the big dog. The big dog with the spear. The big dog makes me ejaculate. No. Just unbelievable. I agree with you. He needs to be the tribal chief from now on. Black Samurai 78. Do you think AEW over time will be a copy, become a copy of Impact Wrestling? Um, I certainly would hope not in terms of the long-term ramifications of what that would mean. But I, I suppose anything is technically possible. Uh, but I also would say it feels like, at least for the moment in time, that they have a much more supportive television network in TNT that has a little bit of a better understanding of how to handle professional wrestling, program professional wrestling, advertise market, promote professional wrestling. Like Spike TV always wanted to be in the wrestling business, but they didn't want to be in the wrestling business, if that makes sense. They wanted to use wrestling as a way to bring viewers to their channel to branch out the viewership for other shows, which to be fair is what companies have done for years with wrestling in general, WWE, WCW, you know, Back in the days when it was a national network, that's part of the reason they brought ECW in. Um, so I hope they don't. Now, now, personally, if I could get to a point where AEW evoked the same type of passions and emotions out of me that 2011-2012 Impact Wrestling did, then I would have so much more fun and enjoyment watching professional wrestling as a whole. I really would. So there is that part of me that hopes that element of it can come true. Uh, secondly, do you ultimately believe pro wrestling in America will fail completely, even WWE? Sometimes I wonder at this point, uh, and P.S., hope you're doing well. I am doing pretty well. Thank you. Thank you. Even though, like I said, um, you know, lots of things going on. I am recording this. It's about, it's now when I did part one, I recorded them back to back. Part one, I recorded like 5.30 in the morning. This is done like at 6 a.m., so up very early. Uh, but early bird gets the worm, as they say, and I find that to be true. Uh, do I think pro wrestling in America will ultimately fail? No, I don't think it will ever go away or entirely fail. I always think there will be a place for it. There will be enough people that enjoy that form of entertainment. Um, do I think it could significantly look different in the future and you know, not be as important or not be as significant in the mainstream and in pop culture? Certainly it already is. Um, it could get worse, but... I don't think it will ultimately fail entirely in America. The Titan Zero asks, Main event push bury these internet darlings. Kenny Omega, Will Osprey, uh, Johnny Gargano. Like, I hate your premise here. Like, it should be like a push bury fire. Because now you're sitting there and telling me I've got a main event one of them and push one, and I can only bury one of these three cucks, fucks, whatever you want to call them. Omega, Osprey, and Gargano. Um, so I tell you what. I'll main event Kenny Omega. I will push Johnny Gargano to the undercard. Because I'm sorry. Johnny Wrestling is a dime a dozen. And then I will bury Will Osprey. Annoys the piss out of me. Keith 10. What WrestleMania feud would you book for Keith Lee? So going down the friendship angle, maybe you would do a Drew McIntyre. Um, I'm not really sure yet. I, I don't know. I haven't thought about it much yet. I think part of it depends on what you do with him at the Royal Rumble, honestly. Screenwriter88, do you think wrestling today is too surface level driven instead of going for feeling when, bre when building creativity? Um, I might need a little more specifics on what you're trying to really reference here, but if I can take a stab at putting my own spin on it, uh, Screenwriter88, I certainly hope that is okay. Uh, I think in general, when you talk about like surface level driven thing, I equate that to something along the lines of the, the cheap instant payoffs, the cheap instant thrills, like the, the quick instant gratification satisfaction. Um, if you're going with that, 
uh, yes, then that is totally a real and legitimate problem because it gets away from the character development. It gets away from the storytelling elements, and that is an epidemic of a problem throughout all of professional wrestling. Dallas Croyer, you convinced me the Montreal screw job wasn't work because it is, and I'm glad to see that you have been shown the light by the genius of the Schlegetti. But since WCW did nothing with Brett, so they didn't, what would you have done differently with Brett and WCW? Well, I can tell you, I wouldn't be bringing him in to be the freaking guest referee for Hogan and Sting's Starcade match. Like, who the hell thought that was a good idea? What I would have done differently with Brett is basically not done what they did in WCW. Like, they just screwed that up from Jump Street. Like, I'm sending Brett straight at Hogan. Straight at Hogan. And I'm letting the fucking gloves come off. It is, you wouldn't work with me, you wouldn't do business from up there, and I realize now, like, you could do any number of things. Like, if the NWO was a smaller group at the time, you could have included Bret Hart in the NWO. You could have sat there and kicked Hogan out of the NWO, and I realize there are different factors there, and you talk about who was actually in the NWO at the time, and all of this, and all that. But there's so many things, there's so many different possibilities of what you could have done, and you didn't do any of them. Like, it was just god-awful and horrible. Just god-awful and horrible. Like, I would have rather they just sat there with Bret Hart and waited until Starcade to unveil him and do it in that Hogan Sting match, but have it be whereas NWO is interfering on behalf of Hogan, uh, Sting's got a surprise, and out comes Bret Hart, and he clears the ring. Like, that is... That launches you right into the Hogan shit, and in a good way. Uh, KOG715, is there anything WWE at this point can do that would make you want to give up on the product for good? Certainly. There's been periods of time over the past couple of years where I've stopped watching for a couple of months. So there's already precedent. Uh, if they start booking and producing SmackDown in the way that they do Raw, it will probably make me want to stop watching very quickly. Uh, Diclonius Games, another longtime follower of the show. When Adam Cole gets brought up to the main roster, do you see the rest of the Undisputed Era being called up with him? I could go both ways on that one. Um, I could see the argument of, well, they were together as a group down there, bring them up to the main roster and have them be together. Uh, that said, if they feel like Cole has more potential than the other members in that group, which, by the way, I certainly would agree with, we are not huge on I mean, Adam Cole's like a main draw type of guy. I think his potential is much higher. I might make the argument of just bring him in and let him go on his own first. And then you save the rest of Undisputed Era as potentially a backup plan, an alternative to where if the initial push of Adam Cole on the main roster doesn't go well, which if Vince gets his greasy, grimy, grubby grips into him, it won't. Then you have the Undisputed Era in the back pocket, sitting there and waiting in the wings that you could bring in and you know change the character, change the story a little bit. That, that might be what I would do. Edsel 4. What were some of your favorite feuds from this past decade? Uh, Mark Henry versus Randy Orton, obviously in 2011, especially that culmination of Night of Champions that year. Fantastic. No, that was fantastic. Sting versus Hogan in that buildup to Bound for Glory in 2011. Another one. Just fantastic. Anyway, it's more about the selfish things and what it meant to the channel and what it meant to me and like the fun I was able to have with those things. Like, if you were asking me two of my favorite rivalries over the past decade, it was that one. Ironically, another one, if you want to go way, way back, all the way to 2010 and kind of that culmination, it was Kevin Steen and Alex America. It really was. Yeah, like, I enjoyed that immensely. Um, Wrestling rants. Is Dino Bravo still dead? Yes, and in every way that matters. Bang, bang, you're dead. 18 bullets in your body. It doesn't rhyme. It doesn't matter because Dino Bravo's dead. Callum Burgess, 14. Have you ever been to a Royal Rumble? No, but certainly would like to go in person someday. Matt Beffy, do you see WrestleMania still taking place in L.A. in 2021? Uh, it's going to depend. Because do you want if you can't have a full venue full of fans, does it really make sense to do a whole WrestleMania week? I'm 50-50 on that one right now. Um, and then Morse two times asked, Hey, Jeff, is there a dream match that you would still like to see? Right. Hear me out. Hear me out. The place, WrestleMania, the main event. It's Randy Orton, hear me out, 
versus John Cena, hear me out, in a Breakfast Club business brawl match. We have never gotten Randy Orton versus John Cena one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Of all the times I've ever fought, this is the one that would count. This is the one that would have the most significance in the meaning. This is the one that if you win with it and you went down the path and direction that you could and make it truly a battle about egos and personal pride and animosity, even the fans could get behind the story. I need this. I want this. And most importantly of all, you, 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 you want it. And more importantly, you know deep down in the fibers of your being, you want it. You want it. You need it. You got to have it. Randy Orton, John Cena, main event of WrestleMania. That is the ultimate of dream matches. I would settle for Roman Reigns versus The Rock right now. But give me Randy Orton versus John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania. That is a main event. If there ever was one.